Today is uh, Wednesday, I think. Is it Wednesday? It sure is. Wednesday. Yeah. Wow. I want to welcome all the listeners to the third segment of Niche Vibes. Trying to develop a relationship to the university and to find people who would like to share knowledge. And our podcast is really about getting to know people and to build a, an opportunity to find out all the good things that are happening throughout the university and uh, the colleges that are uh, partners of ours and how we build uh, a good understanding. So Podcasting is relatively new to me. Uh, I've done radio shows before, but this is uh, kind of uh, new to me. So I'm really happy to be able to do this. My name is Mayingan. I'm your host. And Nish Vibes really comes from the word Nishnabe. Uh, the vibes that I use in the title is still about the, the sounds we make and how we share uh, voices. And really, that's where that came from. So I'd like to welcome all of our listeners and especially to our guest today. We have a very special guest uh, visiting us and goes by the name of Jessica Reeser Rempel. Did I say it right? You did, but I'll say, call me Jesse. Everyone calls oh, me Jesse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Jesse is, that works for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for coming and joining me today. I appreciate uh, you uh, taking time out of your day to join me. And um, maybe it's just a matter of us uh, getting to know each other and to see what we do and how you came to the university and what you do here and sure and uh, maybe you can fill us in on on that yeah well uh you've caught me in a time of transition so i am just transitioning out of my role at conor grable university college with the hat chaplain on and i'm transitioning into a new role there as director of student services so thinking about uh, the residence life and all the programming that we offer at Grable for our students. So here on the campus of University of Waterloo um, and then Conrad Grable University College is my home here. And I came initially as a student. So in 2006, I came to the University of Waterloo. I studied peace and conflict studies and I lived at Grable. Um, and so this is about 15 years later that I've had the chance to come back as a staff member. In that time, I became an ordained minister in the Mennonite tradition and had the opportunity to uh, come in 2021, first as the interim chaplain and then as the chaplain, and now moving into the role of director of student services. So lots of uh, transition, but I'm really excited to be here. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you. I guess your, your road was... Uh pretty deep here with your roots uh, as a student and coming in and now you're here as an administrator, I guess, a role mm -hmm. type of thing. Yeah. So that's really interesting because uh, I noticed that here there are people that had spent uh, quite a few years here at the university and, you know, different faculties and, you know, that gives you a lot of grounding of how maybe you feel about, you know, this university and how maybe they treated you and maybe this is something you, you wanted for a career or, you know, mm -hmm. happened for you. Yeah. So, but your road has taken various steps, uh, peace and conflict. Uh, I hear you went over to Laos for a little while and uh, learned a little bit about the culture over there. And are you, Do you find differences uh, worldly, you know, in, in the work that you do and how people approach it? Hmm. Can you say a bit more? Kind of like uh, the culture, you know, here in yeah. Canada, right? How we would understand peace and conflict or how we would teach about that. So in another country, did you find any differences uh, outwardly, right. you know? Well, I did have the opportunity to live in um, Laos for a year. Okay. And I was actually a student at the time. So I was a student studying peace and conflict studies, and I did a year-long placement in Laos. And some of the work I did was with uh, youth and young adults who were forming a peace club there. And there are cultural differences. I There's no direct translation in the Lao language for this concept of peace. So we were trying to find a similar word because the word they have for peace is kind of like 
just the absence of war and we were saying no it's not it's not quite that there's something more to it and we thought well maybe we could talk about happiness uh, but that's not quite right either and and the cultural difference I noticed was that what they told me was like Jesse we don't have an understanding of happiness without the idea that everyone is happy so in the end we settled on talking about uh, happiness as their closest translation for peace um, with the idea that happiness in that particular cultural context is like harmony with everyone with everything around you so the, uh, when I think about happiness I think from my own context I sometimes think about it of like well you know I'm happy my family and friends are happy everything's okay but over in Laos I was told no no it's not it's not like that everyone everyone has to be happy um, and I think that would extend to the natural world as well. That's what I was going to suggest, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like how did that filter into the earth and plants and animals, you know, was that included in that same kind of thinking? That's my understanding, as, you know, from the Buddhist worldview that I really was just a guest for this short time and know mm -hmm. very little about, but this idea that, yeah, that we, that we are all connected and that that sense of happiness needs to extend to all living things and to the earth itself. Mm -hmm. So how did that filter or change or give you some different ways of working in your own communities? Did you take some of those theories and add it to your skills as a spiritual person here? I did. I think until that point, I actually, like, I grew up in Haiti with my family for a short time and have had opportunity to do lots of travel. And I thought as a young adult that the way to make a difference in the world was to go somewhere far away uh, and that's how I could sort of do good in the world. And then after my experience in Laos, I came to realize that I could make an impact and maybe the best impact I could make would be on my own community in my own context. And for me, really, my community is Mennonites as part of the like faith and cultural heritage that I grew up with. And so that helped to lead me on my journey to being a spiritual leader in the Mennonite tradition. And thinking about the, the story I just told about this idea of friendship, of peace extending out beyond ourselves and the personal, I bring that with me into the spiritual care that I bring. Um, this idea that we need to look for the whole and not just the individual in, in terms of um, thinking about what a good life looks like um, and how everything is connected. That's interesting because employment, you know, career kind of separates sometimes from our, our spiritual understanding. And it doesn't always seem to fit, you know, in, in a society like we have today. But I think if you can find a role, you know, where it all comes together and you're able to honor both sides of you in that manner, mm -hmm. you know, you, that's probably the best, you know, area that we can work in. And it seems you, you found that here very open uh, to your your spiritual beliefs to and I think it's founded on it you know, I think Grable is probably founded on those principles that's right yeah it's founded on um, the Mennonite faith tradition uh, it's always been a place right from the beginning in 1963 um, of wanting to look beyond the Mennonite faith tradition uh, while also staying firmly rooted in it so it has felt like a good home for me and I feel like I can um, be my whole self at work, like you say, integrate the professional and the spiritual. Do you see students kind of in that same mode coming in because of that connection? Uh, do you think students yeah. make a decision based on their ability to share that? Yeah, we see students coming in for all different reasons and it's really exciting now. We have students coming from many different faith traditions, from no faith tradition, from many different cultures. Um, but we still do have a number of students who come in because they're looking for a way to share and express their Christian faith. So it leads to really interesting conversations because sometimes people come in, I don't know, as, as 18 year olds, we can think that we know everything there is to know about the world and about life. And it's very eye-opening for people to just realize, oh, people think differently than I do. And even people who maybe share that same label of Christian faith uh, come from very diverse backgrounds and have very different ways of seeing the world. So it's a really special place. It's an interesting place. And I would say it's a place where uh, faith and spirituality is not taboo. And that's kind of unique in some ways on the university campus. I think it's really important. And also, we're always on a journey, on an adventure to try to figure out how do we make everybody feel welcome? How do we make everybody feel included? 
where is it okay to talk about faith and spirituality and expression of that? And where might that not be the most appropriate? So we don't have it all figured out over there, but we're, we're working on it. I, I noticed in my um, experiences, uh, I've been to a couple of Mennonite churches and they've been so open, you know, mm. to listening to indigenous viewpoints. And mm -hmm. in fact, uh, the Sterling Mennonite Church, uh, I don't know if you've been That's there That's my before. home church. Okay. Yeah, so, I'm a so, member. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so they did a walk to Ottawa a few years ago. Yes. And uh, I was there for that day when they, when they left and I met them in Ottawa and I met them a couple places along yeah. the, the road there. And uh, it was such a welcome, you know, day. It was a good feeling because they've already, and I'm not sure if this runs across all Mennonite, you know, uh, communities and churches, but this one in particular wanted to take some indigenous understanding. And we did circles a few times before they went. And uh, mm -hmm. it was really good to see, you know, that they were intertwining, you know, indigenous thoughts and spirituality together and the respect for it was so amazing and mm -hmm. I really appreciated uh, feeling comforted you know in, in that church and the people there you know I'm still friends with them and we still talk about the, that day and, and so I'm you always, must know Josie Winterfeld of course I do yes, yes I so do. she's a dear friend of mine too yeah, yeah. Josie was a, a spark plug to get things going in yes. this direction yeah. And I know her son who works over at uh, Parkwood Hospital and, okay. you know, so it's been uh, a good relationship and I just wanted to go back and just visit people from time to time, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and and be part of that good feeling that, that, that I felt there. So, uh, yeah, thank you. You know, I think, uh, were, you, were you were there at the time? I was there that day, yeah, oh, yeah? That when you came to the church and I did the first few hours of the walk, I wasn't able to join the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I was going to use the excuse that I had a young baby at the time, but <laughs> I think you had a baby with you the whole way, so that's not an excuse. I a baby and an 80-something-year-old man, <laughs> right. you know, so, yeah. That's a really beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. that baby's a little older now. She uh, is. Mm -hmm. She must be seven now or something like that. Yeah, about but, that, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you, you know, like, I can't speak for all Mennonites, but it is something that I think Mennonites as religious leaders, as academics are really thinking about and wrestling with right now is like, what does it mean, especially here, to be worshipping, to be studying on Indigenous land? Um, so I know at Sterling Avenue Mennonite Church, where I'm a member, and then in the gatherings that we do at Grable, when we do religious gatherings, um, we're making sure we leave space for a land acknowledgement and we're always thinking about how do we do this better? How do we, with humility, talk about what it looks like to, to be here on land that was not ours? Yeah. <laughs> Mennonites as early uh, settlers here too, we have a, a lot to wrestle with in terms of what it means to have been here for 200 years on land where Indigenous people were here before. You know, that's comforting for me because, you know, we have our strong beliefs and I think they're really important for us. But, you know, when we look at land and I, I really think if we even fold it back further, the beginnings of our, our spiritual beliefs and how they've come into become part of churches. And I think it's really comes from the same spirit anyway. I think what humans do on this earth in reflection to the world we call spirit. I, I think we're all born in this world with the same needs, mm. keeping the earth healthy, keeping our water sacred. And, and those are human needs that everybody across the world need. So when mm -hmm. I think of indigenous people, and we're all indigenous from someplace, like mm -hmm. we all have a, an indigenous background from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a connecting point. You know, we, we have various uh, faiths now, different religions and names. And I think it all evolves from one creator uh, bringing us to the earth with natural elements that we need to keep sacred, mm -hmm. which is what the things that keep us plants and animals alive is, you know, our water and everything our mother earth provides for us. And, and if we can scale it back to that point, then I think we can find some unity. There's separation now and there's wars and, you know, things that are happening around the world, but we need to find some unifying factor. And I think that's really what, I guess, if we look at indigenous spirituality, what we've promoted, you know, that keeping our sustenance alive, you know, mm. our Mother Earth healthy. And I think really that's what I hear when I, when I go to different churches about the love and we call it the seven grandfather teachings, you know, but it's implement, implemented in, in various uh, different faiths. So that's what I think about the unity and how it can happen maybe yeah. well that's a beautiful vision mm -hmm. yeah so when you when you're doing spiritual work here is, mm -hmm. is it a regular like a, a service that you do and, and people come and 
and they come and join you for that? That's right. So in my role as chaplain, I help to facilitate a weekly worship service uh, for students and staff and faculty. And anyone's welcome to join. It usually centers around people who are involved at Grable in some way. So uh, the residents or students who are taking classes there. Um, so we have a weekly hour long um, gathering where we are singing and where we are praying. And there's often a lot of emphasis and focus on uh, social justice. And as part of the Mennonite tradition, a big emphasis on, on peace building that I keep coming back to and, and the ways that it's all connected with climate action and uh, justice for 2S LGBTQ plus individuals and things like that as well. So that's some of the flavor uh, that shows up in our services there. And then we also have forums and groups and discussions, like formal and informal, um, but whatever we can do to help students and staff and faculty be engaging, to be talking about their faith, to be talking about the issues that are important to them. And I think really asking the questions of like, when you strip it back, when we strip back what we believe, like what is the point of it all? And so I really am inspired by the vision you set out um, in terms of thinking about what your uh, spiritual worldview is. And I think there is so much in common. Like if we look at the Christian um, Bible or things like that, my way of interpreting it, my, my way of reading it is that it comes down to love of the creator, love for each other, love for the earth. And I think if we were doing that, if we all were doing that, the world would be a very, very good place. It is a good place with a lot of challenges too. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> so this isn't part of curriculum. It's uh, something that voluntarily students That's right. enjoy? It's extracurricular. Yeah. Uh -huh. The work I do as a chaplain is all voluntary, that students can come for conversation or they can come to these uh, worship services. At Grable, we also teach religious studies courses that you can get credit for. Mm -hmm. um, but our goal is that all the students who encounter our residence program are interacting with faith in some way. Um, that's part of our, our mission and values. It might be that their interaction is to say, yeah, I'm not really a person of faith. And then we're encouraging them to look at their own uh, just spiritual side. Um, or maybe that's you know, just them discovering that they feel like they're full of self when they're walking in the woods. Like to me, that's part of what spirituality can mean, but it's, a, it's an important priority for us. Do we get like Muslim students every now and then? Do we have? We ever? do. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. We have wonderful Muslim students living there right now. Uh, Buddhist students. Excellent. Yes. And then and then many who would just say, yeah, no, no faith background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's I think as I said a bit earlier, that's always been been the goal. The goal was never to create kind of an enclave for Mennonite students or even for Christian students, but to be a place where dialogue, relationship, encounter with difference could happen. And if they do come from like a Muslim faith, do they yeah. want to practice uh, their ways sometimes and you share that knowledge or is that uh, yeah. something you do? We do. We had a really lovely service this spring where um, one of our Muslim students came and the whole service was spent learning about his tradition and his faith background. Another of those services this spring was focused on one of our students sharing about their Hindu faith tradition. So yeah, even as we're rooted in the Mennonite Christian faith, we want to make space and we do make space to hear from other perspectives and that's essential and I think so much of the good that happens happens around the table around around food so we are we try to create formal settings like that for knowledge sharing to happen but I think the most beautiful conversations about faith and about many other things just happen informally around the lunch table okay I, I know the university hosts a world religion conference every year mm -hmm. I've spoken at it a couple times and I think they're trying to get a hold of me to come back but uh, um, do you participate in those? Do you ever get a chance to, to become a speaker or anything like that? You know, I, I haven't heard about it, unfortunately. So I wonder if it's something that our religious studies professors would know more about. But yeah, I'd love to know more. And I, and I think the uh, UW Chaplains Association would love to know more, too. Maybe they already do. Yeah, I think it's been 25 years or so, yeah. so it's been around a while. Okay. And, uh, well, then it's me who's new here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, and they had all different uh, faiths speaking, and they have a, a question that they'd pose to everybody, and it's a, it's a good conversation, and sometimes we even bring, uh, like for the indigenous side, we would bring singers and dancers in mm -hmm. once in a while just to demonstrate some of the culture too. So yeah, it's a good day, it's a good evening to you know, celebrate together. 
Sounds I think that's like what they're event. promoting. Yeah. Yeah. So no, they trying to get a hold of me, so I don't know. Yeah. If I'll is do this it an again. official? Is this like an official university event? I don't think so. I think it, it comes from the Amadeus uh, community. Okay. So I think they're the ones who set it up and been operating yeah. it for years. So I thought I, I wondered if you were part of that. So. No, I'd love to learn more. Mm -hmm. I I do see. I think the university does have like increased interest these days in seeing spirituality as an important part of life. So it's it's really fun and interesting to see these opportunities pop up around campus. And and even, I mean, I can't speak on behalf of, of UW's administration, but I do hear, you know, uh, if a student um, passes away or something like that, there is some sense and understanding of we need to offer more here than just what counseling services can offer. And the sense, even if we're not quite on a path of knowing exactly how to meet those needs, that there's a place for, for faith and spirituality in some ways. Yeah, I think that's good because uh, the world today, you know, what we're seeing, you know, the wars and the, the climate change issues we're facing, uh, I, I think there's one thing that'll kind of help us feel united again. You know, if it's not language or if it's distance, you know, that's keeping us apart, it, it's, a, it's a faith that there's, a, there's something here, you know, like, however we believe that to be you know mm -hmm. and if we can kind of draw to that when times are hard because you know yeah. terrorism around the world and even in our own country you know what happened to indigenous peoples at residential schools and you know we talk about any world atrocity you know where do we go to find healing from that and it's a matter of us you know finding that faith between ourselves you know we might practice different protocols but i think uh, you know if we can all come together and say that you know our, our creator guides us and we can find strength in that you know maybe that's something that we're all trying to find uh, and and you have sanctions in some communities that you know have taken out spirituality from the schools and places where they don't allow people to to practice those you know so you know i think it's just a different world but it's what it's going to happen is we're going to go back to that to find that unity mm. again and i think that's where we'll all you know eventually turn to you know and you know when somebody passed away like you said when there's somebody passed away at the university we got to come together somehow you know and, and find something to fulfill the need of that loss and, and and i think this is why it's so important for us to consider spirituality we actually brought it into our convocation ceremonies now hmm. so uh, every graduate now from the university um, i actually take in the eagle staff ahead of the mace and, and then we do an opening uh, and then a drum song so we're incorporating you know that's exciting to hear that must be a busy week for you with all those convocations last year <laughs> we had to make up for the uh, covid year so we did 22 con convocation ceremonies oh, in a row yes seven three a day for like seven days wow <laughs> so the university's really uh, been really strong in, in wanting to bring uh, reconciliation to the university mm -hmm. we had our uh, reconciliation uh, ceremony last week which started off with our recommitment ceremony uh, mm -hmm. that the university's made. So, you know, it's been a good year and a half here, you know, trying to include Indigenous knowledge throughout the, the university. So, so I'm happy to hear, you know, what you're doing over at Grable and, and building that uh, space for everybody. Right. Yeah. Oh, it is exciting. And, I, and I, it's exciting to enter into the spirit of openness of saying um, it doesn't have to just be about what I believe or what what you believe, but to say where is the common ground, and yeah, how can we work together? And I have been watching, and I've been really excited to see the ways in which, uh, well, you've been popping out places, and the ways in which the university has been doing that. Like I, I was present. Um, now, when was this? May, June, um, when the attacks happened at at yes. Peggy Hall, and we gathered in the in the university as a community, and it was it was really powerful to. Um, have you present there and offering some words? And I was so excited that uh, that someone on campus recognized, you know, we can't just we can't just talk. We have to leave space for for the spiritual, for for mystery um, in a hard time when we come together as a community. It's so essential. So I, I was just honored change. to get the call because yeah. you know events happen and we're there for certain things, but. They, they thought about us, you know, and, uh, yes. and I, I really, we took the smudge bowl around for students yes. that wanted to smudge after, and it was really a, really a good gesture, you know, to, to, to bring 
a spiritual side to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then actually we went over and cleaned out the offices with our smudging ceremony, pipe ceremony, where, where the incident happened and, and right. in, in the foyer also. So, you know, I, I really think that's where Indigenous people, you know, who's really hasn't been in this type of post-secondary, you know, a lot go to college, but university levels, we just weren't qualifying. And, and I think this is kind of a draw now to say that we're now hearing and understanding and wanting to, to support and, and I think that's going to draw more Indigenous people and hmm. perspectives. So that's going to be great. So what you're doing over there, it just seems welcoming too. You know, for Indigenous students maybe thinking about what Grable teaches and, and how they can participate in that. So so that's what I do when I go out there. I talk about what's going on now and, and how maybe we can advance Indigenous uh, education levels. Mm-hmm but having a place that's comfortable. and Because right now, they're coming back into their own culture now. Residential school took a lot of that away. Their parents didn't practice certain things, and they were forced into other ways of thinking. But now this generation of students want to know about our ceremonies. Uh, it was evident by our, our powwow that we had here. Yes. A lot of them come back to dance and you know celebrate the culture together. So, you know, in, in a world that seems complicated and, and dangerous... I can kind of see internally we're making efforts to change that for all people that live here. I appreciate that so much. Yeah, no, it, it feels like a really meaningful time to be here at the university as there is this openness to change. And I think a really special generation of young adults. And I can't speak to the experiences of indigenous young adults, but for just the many young adults I encounter, um, there is openness in a sense that, you know, these are very challenging times and we need to lean on something bigger, whether that's just dealing with the, just, just dealing with the small problem of the climate crisis mm -hmm. um, or unpacking, as you say, the, the challenges and, and horrors of uh, residential schools and everything going on in the world. It's just too much. And so I, I do see that openness from young adults of we, we need some spiritual practices. We need something more and there's a longing and a searching for that and some find it in a in a traditional religion and what they've practiced and what's been passed down to them and others are on a journey of seeking of looking for something more so let's let's communicate more with this you know like uh at grable you know you know maybe me and a couple of elders or somebody can come over and you know share some of the circles and build some of that knowledge space there and i think that would be really really interesting and yeah, there'd be so much openness to that. So. Oh, that's great to hear. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So in your new administrative role, though, uh, do you have any changes that you're thinking about or new ideas that you're going to introduce? Uh, yeah, great question. I, as part of that role, I still get to think about the, the chaplaincy aspects. Now I'll be supervising a new chaplain coming in at some point. But I'm not... I'm not keen to make changes right now. So I told you I was there as a student. I'm really passionate about it. I think it's on a good direction. So I want to spend my first, you know, at least year there, first few years, leaning into what's good and what's beautiful and, and what's going well. And then maybe talk to me in a year and I'll have some changes to make. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, once you get in those roles and you kind of evaluate right. and see, you know. Well, so. and what's interesting is already, you know, students come to me and they say, hey, this is a concern we have. This is a question we have. So in a sense, it's not even about me and what I think and, and where I'm going right now. It'll it'll come out of students and uh, and the feedback that they bring forward about the things they're passionate about. And a nice thing about that, you, you've probably had students come and then uh, they see you in this role now, so they kind of grew with you, you know, to watch this, uh, you know, Grable build, you know, what it is today. And, you know, and you were part of it for so long. So you're probably a comforting person to have in those positions. So. Yeah. No, there's, there's a lot of trust there um, that I built in my role as chaplain. And I think there's also some trust because I was at Grable as a student, this sense that I love Grable and I want what's best for it. And I do have an openness to change, an openness to growth. Um, but also a sense that we don't have to change everything all at once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know what you came to expect when you come to the interview, but, yeah. but you know, I really think it was a, a good opportunity to know, you know you and, and the things that you are doing, and uh, congratulations on your new role for sure. But Thank you. That, that's the purpose of Niche Vibes. It's to uh, 
you know, I've been here and there's so many great things happening at the university overall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we kind of get caught in our world, like, uh, you know, and do things there, but we need to branch out a little bit. And that's really why I thought this would be a good opportunity to get to know people throughout the university and uh, maybe a little bit about what I do here too. So I think uh, you've seen, you know, the ceremonies that we've done and we've been involved with quite a few things now. So I think that's a good convergence and in, in, in friendship building opportunity for, uh, for us to work together, you know, mm -hmm. with the vision that we're hoping to help these students go out and, and have all this knowledge, right? Uh, right. You know, and maybe that's where we can help change the world. And I think we can participate in that. Well, That's, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> I'm re I really was honored to get the invitation, and uh, I'm looking forward to continuing to build a relationship. We'd love to have you come to one of our Wednesday community suppers, so I'll talk to you about that. Come join us for supper, and we'd love to give you the chance to meet our staff and faculty and students. So uh, I'll yeah. take you up on that, and I'll okay. do that for sure. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> So thank you, Jesse, for uh, spending some time with us this afternoon. And uh, I really appreciate you uh, coming over and getting to know you a little bit better. And uh, so let's, let's do that. We'll actually get to, to visit a little bit more often. Sounds great. In our language, we say miigwech, uh, which means thank you. And if you want to say thank you very much, we say chimigwech, which adds a little bit of greater to that word. Mm. And I want to thank our listeners today for uh, uh, listening to our, our conversation. It, it was unscripted, and we just sat down and... Uh, shared some time together and that's what I kind of like uh, you know sometimes you can script things but when you just get to know somebody and have a conversation that that's fine too and that's kind of how we operate here on Niche Vibes and uh, so I want to thank you once again for joining us and uh, Josh our technical assistant today for helping us with all the technical part of it and uh, we'll be back again uh, soon for version number four of Niche Vibes. Miigwech everybody have a great afternoon.